It is daybreak in Rhode Island. And we're in Cumberland, walking down a dark, woodsy road. Early, early. And there's a couple of cemeteries here that are haunted. One or both are called the Elder Baloo Meeting House. There was a meeting house here, a gathering place. It was a family. I have to be a little careful on this road because you have speeding cars. The speed limit's 15 miles an hour. Look at this guy. Woo! So we're going to cross the street right up here. I'm going to give you a little history. Oh, I see the other cemetery. I'm oh, just walking. I haven't been up there. But straight ahead at the turn, there's the other, I think the main part of the cemetery. I think this is a, a family plot area for the original family. But it was 1773, and there was a church near here in Cumberland called the First Baptist Church. There were two pastors serving, a Nathaniel and Josiah Cook. And within one year of each other, they both had died. Succeeding them was a reverend named Abner Ballou. And he did so for about 35 years. And that's the family that the early pioneers of this area. So let's see, this says Rhode Island Historical Cemetery. And you see these here, which is nice. Again, I did that story on Mount Tom with, it's kind of that peddler story. Yeah, Cumberland 28. And we did the witch story in Exeter, and they all have these, these signs. Well, let's go up the stairs and have a look. Old granite blocks. So Baloo, the Baloo, the Baloo family. And I see it looks like there are three family plot areas, so we'll take a look. Here it says mother, father, Whipple. Ah, so this says Aiden Ballou Whipple, 1883-1904. His wife, Lucinda Smith, 1838-1908. So these are, this is later, way later. Let's see over here. J-H-S, A-H-S. And it looks like L-E-C. Yeah. So here's another family plot marker. Stone. Crocker, 1915. So these are all pretty late. Let's see what this one says over here. Eighteen eighty seven, eighteen eighty seven. There's something over here. It's just a stone. And it looks like there's just one more over here. Up here, 
take a look at this. Margaret Whiting. I guess these are all relations. I'm guessing. Yeah, Margaret Whiting. Let's see. His wife died April 1901. So again, these are these are later ones. Seventy-two years old. Company C. All right. Well, let's go to the main cemetery down the road and across the street. And I'll give you a little bit more history that Deb dug up. <laughs> I know, I know, no pun intended. And we'll watch for the cars as we go along here. Yeah, it's kind of a spooky road. Look at the old walls here, all right? Yeah, I see it right up. It looks like there's some built-in crypts or mausoleums. So it says, starting with a deed of 40 acres from his father, Abner, and I guess that would be Ab Abner Ballou, was able to add to his estate and become respectably rich. In his will transcribed in the Aiden and Ballou history. Elder Abner and his family stood at the head of social respectability here in the general community. Around them wielding a corresponding influence. He was a devotee of civil as well as religious liberty and he stood firmly on the side of American independence. Of course, this was during the revolution. Here it comes. The cars. All right, at least he slowed down for me. Be happy to get off this road, I gotta tell you. Done about five takes on this with cars almost hitting me oh look at this this is really cool yeah spooky as his sons grew up to manhood he endowed them by gift deeds with certain parcels of his real estate here he brought up his grandson welcome jilson who was left an infant of the early death of Lavina Ballou, Jilson. And for him, he took care to provide a good start in his life. Obadiah Ballou donated the land for the elder Ballou Cemetery here in 1749, accepting about one half acre of land at the north end of the first mentioned tract or homestead farm, which is, as I hereby do accept it, for a bearing place for myself and my friends and neighbors. From the gift deed from Obadiah to his son Abner. And we have some pictures of this, these buildings. I don't know if they're still here. But this is it, and this is supposed to be very haunted. All kinds of crazy stuff going on here. Well, we're focusing on the history on this channel. So let's look at some gravestones that are very old. These stones are washed away. You cannot take not even going to put the, the flashlight on there. There's footstones. There's footstones buried here. 
But here are some stones we can read. Looks like Sally. Let's get out the flashlight. See what we can see here. Yeah, in memory of Sally. Wife of Major Emerson Fowler, who died August 28, 38 years old. No, yeah, 38, right? Lucy Maria says here, January 1st, 1832, in Vienna. 1840s. Oh, there's a lot of stones back here. I just noticed on the hill here. Here's Polly T, wife of Nelson Follett. Polly T. 21 years. Only 21 years old. Let's go over here. Miss Amy, looks like. Daughter of, we'll have to get the flashlight out again. Come on. <laughs> Every time I turn this flashlight on, it's doing some blinking. All right, daughter of Providence Smith, who died March 16th, 1837. Thirty-one years old. There's that weeping tree. of stones here. Let's see what else. Looking for stones that have inscriptions that are readable. There's a bunch here. Let's get back. The main road. The main thoroughfare is down here. So it looks like it's surrounded by this old stone wall. Look at that. There's some more. You gotta imagine there are some revolutionary soldiers here, August 31st. Died 1834. So these are these are later. John Butman. This looks like a newer stone. 58 years old. Jesse. Again, they all have this willow tree. Pretty common. Son of Captain John and Olive Butman, he died, oh, six years old, and three, uh, seven months, three days. There's the prayer. Even like today, the gravestones for the kids, they, because they were little, they miniaturized them compared to the grown-ups. So that means that this one must be pretty young. Maybe a baby, huh? Take a look, see if we can see anything here. It just says JB. Nothing, nothing except JB. Huh. 
All right, so let's see up here. We've got more. Here's one we can just read without the light. Wife of Levi Cook. Rhoda, Rhoda Darling. She died in the 67th year of her age, 1843. Look at this one, welcome. Was that the name? Yeah, infant son. Cook. Look at that big stone over there. Let's check that out. This has a, a beautiful patina, and my opinion is don't don't clean these stones. It's like a penny, the patina of a penny. I think it looks beautiful. They don't have to be perfect. People get so caught up with these stones, cleaning them and stripping the surfaces off. You know what this is? Oh, this is the original slate, and it is encased. It is encased in concrete, so that was done recently. The memory of, yeah, you can't really see. Third year, 93, 93rd year, wherever this was. Can't really read. Let's see what the insignia, now that's a different insignia. That is some type of a, a wheel. Now it looks like leaves of a flower. There's the stem where my flashlight is. There's an interesting, interesting little star there. Let's go over here. Yeah, there's some good pictures that I'm going to show you of the meeting house building, the house, and also there's a picture of the inside of the house that I'll show you right now. You can just tell that you've seen this like in Exeter when you see stones like this. This is that's 1700s. Those are the earliest ones. Or this one here, worn away completely. Which is surprising. The slate usually holds up better than that. Look at all these. This one has an interesting, we're gonna get the light out, some interesting symbolism on the top. Yeah, look at that. Memory of James Bellow, who died September 28th, 78, well, I think that's 78. Yeah. Very peaceful here. But calm before the storm. And you know what? The fog is rolling in. Look at that. The fog is rolling in just now. Wow. It's got to be close. And what's going to happen is the wind is going to come ripping in here. That front is just west here, coming across Pennsylvania and upstate New York. I saw it on radar. But luckily, I got all my filming done yesterday, Thursday. A beautiful, stunning day in New England. So we're finished.
This is my last one. And it's kind of a uh, ad lib. I was at the diner by my hotel and there was an old timer, even older than me. <laughs> yes, it is possible. There are people older than me. And he, of course, from this area said, where is a spooky cemetery? Old. Well, they're all old, most of them. And he said, oh, Elder Baloo, meeting place. I'm like, you know, with the accent, I was like, what? Meeting place? Like, I, don't, I want to go to a cemetery. No, no, he drew it on a napkin. And before he could finish the napkin sketch, I found it in Find a Grave and GPS it on maps. And I go, this? And he's like, oh, all right, yeah. <laughs> so that's how we found it, thanks to Mike. He's not that old. I mean, but he's older than me, which means he's wiser than me. Look at this. It says Com Comfort B. Comfort B. Alu. Let's put a light on that. Look at this, like the uh, Aladdin's lamp. Oh, it's Mrs. Yeah, October 25th, 1826, in the 81st year of her age. And you also see these, these lichen, they're in like circles. You see those a lot on the slate. A lot of the stone came out of Vermont, I think, which is known for all the quarries. Look at that, here's a little tiny stone. Well, it could be a footstone. No, it's lined up with these little ones, probably children, just so sad. We'll never know who that was, but someone lies here, some little boy or little girl, lost to the sands of time, known only to God. Well, we are at the top of the cemetery here. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah, look at the stone wall over there. It gets pretty tall. All built by hand, probably in the early 1800s, or maybe when they originally Established the cemetery more probably, yeah. Probably in the 1700s. Look at this little stone here. Who was that? A little tiny stone. No name. Oh, there is. There is something on there. Hold on. Let's at least try and see if we can see. see the blinking flashlight yeah so it looks like let me get the camera pointed down a little bit more well we'd have to dig this out but looks like 1795 pj all right little it's got to be a child because the stone is miniaturized and I think this is probably where the children are, right here. There's just a lot of tiny little slate stones. Yeah, these are all tiny. This has to be like a children's section. Ooh, look at the fog. It's coming, guys. Batten down the hatches. Batten down the hatches. Yeah, I'm going to be just doing editing and some speaking. I'm going to do everything indoors after I leave this place. New England's been getting... The whole East Coast, I got to tell you, pounded. This whole summer I've been watching on the Weather Channel every day. I just see storm systems. You guys have gotten crushed by the rain. Here, this here is a tumulus which is above some type of crypt system. 
Let's go this way. Let's check it out. What do you say? Yeah, it's getting foggier and foggier. Something's coming in, guys. Something is moving in. Wow, this is, this is neat. This is spooky. I'm loving this. I'm gonna stay after I finish filming and do some more scouting. I mean, there's a lot here. And if I see anything really interesting, I will, I'll keep it on. So here you go, look at this. Vaults, crypts, big iron bars. Oh, look at this. And I'm sad to say, well, we could go in there if we wanted, I guess. It's too bad people are partying in here, and leaving their garbage. Look at that. Yeah. So I believe these would be holding crypts. Crypts. You couldn't bury the bodies in the winter. These are common in the Midwest, Chicago. I've seen a lot of these. The weather. You know, they didn't have backhoes back then. So you'd have to wait for spring. Bring the frozen bodies out. These are neat. Here's another one. So these are purposely designed. Uh, this didn't get cut off, so they, it's interesting. They, they are allowing people to go in. They're bolted on. I'm not sure. Maybe it's something to hold on to. Vaulted ceilings. Just like the old... Late 1800s, early 1900s architecture, even in high-rise buildings, called Tile Arch, where you have compression forces. Oh, I take that back. Look at the... They must have sawed one of the bars off, because the other ones have four bars to keep people out. Let me just... Yeah, okay. See, somebody... Somebody took that off. No one's going in this one, so this might be an interesting one to poke our head in. Let me see if I can maneuver the gimbal. Yeah. So nobody's been partying in here. This one's a little bit darker. Let's get the light on. Yeah. Interesting. Let's see if I can get the... Uh, Angle down here. It's pretty tall in here, so they probably stacked the bodies. I should say stacked the coffins. And here is the last one. Take a quick look in here. Oh, this has a cemented ceiling, but they're in remarkably good shape considering. Yeah, great history, guys. Great history here. I love it. Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Boy, if you watched my live stream, I really screwed the pooch on <laughs> when I went to that live stream and said it was in Rhode Island. Rentham, and that's in Massachusetts. But the state lines are so close here. I, I think that's right on the near. Came, I came out of Woonsocket and I'm like, oh, it's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's Rhode Island. No, it's Massachusetts. So you're just crossing state lines every time you get in the car here. Well, compared to Illinois. Well, thanks for coming along, guys. This was really cool. I especially, I especially like this part here. All right, that's going to be it for Rhode Island. I'm not sure. this. You'll probably see this before some of the other ones that I did that will come out later, but this is my last 
my last one as the fog is rolling in Ooh, gotta love new england guys see you on the next one